What's going on growers? It's James Pagione coming to you live from Jersey. It's September and we're just a few weeks away from fall here, but that doesn't mean me and Tuck are slowing down. So today we want to take you along for an amazing backyard garden harvest. Let's go! Let's start things off by grabbing a fresh melon from the back corner of the food forest. This one's called the Charente melon. And before I get into it too much, I want to mention that I'm in New Jersey. I'm in zone 7A here. And the size of my property, people ask a lot, it, the whole thing's about one third of an acre. But I only grow on about one third of that. So the total growing space is about a ninth of an acre. So it's not a lot of space and basically anybody can be doing what I'm doing in here, as long as you have the opportunity. And as long as you have a, a loyal guy like Tuck. This guy's the best, I'll tell you. Right, boy? So me and him are just like, <laughs> we're feeling like crazy excited about these Charente melon because I know they're like either ripe or overripe. The smell on this thing is just insane. This is a cantaloupe. And once I come around this area, I could just smell it. It smells incredible. Typically when um, melons like this are ripe, usually you could just pick it up and it'll crack right off the stem. That's not happening like this, but we're getting some cracking on the stem, which is a good sign of it being ripe. Another sign of it being ripe is when the tendrils like these would start to turn uh, brown and die off. But I just think this thing's ripe because the smell is just incredible. So <laughs> let's not, let's not uh, talk about it too much anymore. Let's cut this baby off and then taste it and see how delicious it actually is. So let's get these uh, pruners right here. I'm just going to cut it off. I don't want to damage the plant too much. So let's cut this baby right here. Oh, I cannot wait to cut into this, man. <sighs> this thing's so beautiful, I barely even want to cut into it. But we've got some uh, squash back here that's ready too. Some yellow squash. Look at this. I've got to make sure I harvest these. So let's grab these babies. Nice two big ones. Or one big one, one small one I meant. Look at this. Look at the color. Man, these are just so striking and so beautiful. This one's definitely a little past, but this one is perfect. So I want to cut this open. I'm going to show you what it looks like inside and we're going to taste it as well. And look at right down below you. There's another one that's about ready too. So this is a productive kind of melon. I cannot wait to taste it. I hear it's like one of the best tasting melons. It's supposed to be so sweet. Look down right below us though. Look at, look at this. The squirrel has been going around and burying a bunch of seed because I give my chickens fresh, uh, fresh wild bird seed just to snack on along with their feed as well. So they stole a lot of that and just buried it in sections in the garden. So the squirrels are just, they're nonstop. But I think I have a decent solution for them that I'm going to get into. Well, you guys gave it to me in just a few minutes, but let's open this baby up. Let's not delay any longer. Look at this thing. It's like a, like a mini basketball or something. Really cool. Nice size to it. I'm very excited to open it. So first thing we're going to do is just cut off the one end, cut off the other end, give us a nice flat plane. And then here's the moment of truth <laughs> is what we've been waiting for. Let's slice right into this baby. Oh yeah, <laughs> look at that. Oh my gosh, look at that. This thing looks perfect. Oh my gosh, it looks perfect. I gotta slice this off and taste it real quick. Oh man, just gonna slice one little slither. And then we'll just... get some of the seeds and stuff out. Oh man. I want to get this top part, no rind. There it is. <laughs> um, if you've never grown your own food, this might seem silly, like how excited I get over these little things. But if you have grown your own food, if you've tasted the stuff from your own backyard, these are the varieties you can't get in the store. This is, it's got the minerals, the flavor. I mean, it's, it's tough to describe. Let's taste it though. Thank God I don't have a bunch of these because this thing would give you melon belly. I mean, you would eat so much of this that you would get a stomach ache. So I'm gonna leave the other one for just like another day or so. But man, these things are incredible. Look at, look at how ripe it is and ugh, the flavor. This is why we grow food in our backyard. Cause we can go from asparagus to strawberries, to grapes, to apples, to peaches, to cantaloupe, to watermelons. It's, it's all here. Time to grab some fresh Jersey tomatoes. And we've got a lot to grab. 
Let's start off with this Russian variety right here. This is the mushroom basket variety. These things are some big tomatoes, beautiful shape and relatively mild flavor. Look at that though, oh my gosh. Let's get in the sun a little more. It's like this pinkish blush. The ribs, I mean, it's just, this is like a picturesque tomato, so beautiful. Let's harvest this other one though. Grab it right here. Another beautiful tomato, love to see it. We've got a lot to harvest here. Here's one that looks really cool. Look at this, the pineapple bicolor tomato. Look at the uh, streaking and stuff on this. That's just, it's supposed to be like that. Oh man, it's so beautiful. That's why they call it the bicolor. We've got more to grab here though. Look at this set. I'm gonna take this top one, pretty nice, and this bottom one here. Then we'll grab some of these lemon boys right next to us. The basket's already starting to get some color. Get this lemon boy here. This one up top here. And as this se season starts to move on, you'll notice that the, the hybrids really do well late into the season. Grab a couple of these super sweet 100s. I'm not gonna grab too many because it'll get a little monotonous and a little repetitive. But if you guys think that these harvest videos are getting a little repetitive, that's kind of the idea. I wanna show how much food I'm getting because throughout the years, people have always asked me to you know, display more of how much I'm harvesting. So I'm just doing this to kind of encourage you to let you know how much you can get and you should be harvesting a lot all the time. That's what happens if things are going well, I guess. <laughs> Look at these honey drops, man. These are so cool. Oh, the character of every tomato, the, the difference in them, it's what makes it so exciting to come out here, I think. Not only do they all look different and have their own little different, uh, you know, characteristics and everything, but they have their own little unique flavors and just unique things about them. Look at the Rosetta Burns over here. Oh, beautiful. Nice looking tomato. <laughs> Tuck's starting to get a little interested. Here's more of the Super Sweet 100s. This thing is just so productive. And then as we move to the right over here, we've got the Honey Gold Cherries. I mean, the Sun Gold Cherries. Sorry about that. This is my favorite tasting tomato. These things are so good. Uh, they split though, so that's not the greatest thing, but that's okay. Let's keep moving along. Over here, another incredible late season one. This is the Chef's uh, Choice Orange. These ones are still a bit yellow, so we're only gonna take these two. Take this one. This is a nice one here though. Look at this one. Starting to get more of the orange color. Really nice. Let's back up over here though and grab some more eggplants before we get more tomatoes because these ones definitely need to be harvested. Look at these guys, two beautiful ones. This is the Rosa Bianca. Look at this. <laughs> and when they start to get that ripe, they get that ribbing too, like you see in the mushroom basket. So pretty cool stuff. We'll put that in. People make fun of me, they say I need a bigger basket. I've already said though, I don't want to carry too much food around. Let's check these ones out. This is my new favorite looking eggplant. These are the in Antigua eggplants. This is an Italian variety. This one, not only does it look beautiful, it's got this nice nutty flavor to it. So a really good flavor as well. So let's get that in and then we'll keep moving along. <laughs> let's get a couple of pink tongue eggplants right here or at least one pretty big one. You'll notice I grow a lot of the purple eggplants. I love the, the shading of them. And uh, they're just so beautiful. And then we've got some Cuban L semi-sweet peppers over here. These peppers aren't ripe yet, but look how many are on here. Just insane. So we're gonna take just about the two of the biggest ones just to let the plant continue to produce more. And when it comes to peppers, if you allow one really ripe pepper on the plant, then that pepper might focus on just producing that seed. So it's good to take some of the ripe ones off early. We'll let Tuck grab that, hide it, and play with it. And we'll just keep moving around and grabbing more stuff because we've got a lot of tomatoes just right behind us over here. Let's grab. Well, looks like the Cuban L semi-sweet peppers are Tuck approved. He seems to be enjoying those a bit. And then right next to him here, we've got more Rosa de Burns as we trail up. So let's grab a few of these, one here, and we'll go up. Another one, and let's move up to get even more. Pretty tomato, I love these ones. And let's grab these sets. So the bowl is definitely starting to fill up. We're gonna have to drop her off soon. <laughs> I love doing this. I love being out here, I mean. What's more fun than just spending so much time actually having to harvest because there's so much stuff to get. 
I love it. Let's drop this stuff off though. Ah, uh, now nah, let's keep grabbing more actually, forget it. Let's get some stuff here. Here's the, another one of the pineapple bicolor, bicolor. Uh, a little damage right there, but that's okay. We'll cut that out. And then these fruits can get up to two pounds. Insane. Here's one of the big ones. Oh my gosh, look at the size of it. It has a bunch of sun scald on the top. That's not really damage to, that's not gonna damage the flavor or anything. That's just basically sunburn. So we need to leave some more leaves at the top for that. This one got a little sunburn too, but it's still, we're still gonna take it. And that, that is striking. That is awesome. I wanna show you though, cause I thought this tomato was cool looking, so I grew a bunch of them. I have another one right here. Let me show you. Look at this baby. Looking nice. Ooh, that's a really pretty one too. So we love to see that. And then behind us, let's just grab a couple of these smaller ones here. <laughs> splitting, bad splitting on these ones. These aren't the uh, um, yellow pear tomato. This is a different variety. I'll put the name. I think it's, yes, yeah, a flaming burst. That's the name of this one. I'm not gonna do it again. It's not particularly a great tomato or anything. So I would not ever use something like this to replace something like the cherry bomb we have right here. Look at the cherry bomb. Look at the size of these. It's almost like the super sweet 100s, but they're a little bigger. They don't taste as good, but the plant's just as prolific as we <laughs> trail up to the top. It's insane. Oh my gosh. And then look at the apples right next to it. It's just, it's beautiful. This is such a fun time of year because at this time of the year, there are so many different colors that come through the forest and uh, so many different flavors and everything like that. A few more tomatoes I want to grab right over back here. Follow me along. As we pass this uh, pear right here, doing real well, I've got some big ideas for this section right here. So follow along going into the fall. This isn't going to look like this. Right now it's just wild tomatoes and we're snacking them a little bit here and there, but I've got some plans here, so stay tuned for that. Come around on this side, you've got to see these rows that have burned. They're, they look beautiful. This whole plant is loaded. Look at this. Look at this. You can't even see some of them in there. There's so many. Whew. Look, look at down there. Oh my gosh. Let's grab her. Ooh, this is the, one of the doubles. Oh, look at that double tomato. Beautiful, man. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a butt or something. Hilarious. Let's check this one out up here. Here it is, that, that, that's a nice rose to burn. Oh yeah, and then let's trail back over here because we have a beautiful soldaki back here too. Love that variety. Let's check this out. <laughs> oh, pretty nice, Tuck. This is one of the nicer soldakis of the year, man. Wow, beautiful. I've got some fresh back here too. Let me grab these tomatoes. I know I have some hidden in the back. <laughs> you probably can't even like see. Most people would not plant tomatoes back here, but me and Tuck definitely like to go a little crazy. Here's a, oh my gosh, look at this one. This must be the goldy yellow. This is perfect. Absolutely beautiful. And there's a bunch of cucumbers back here too. Just hidden everywhere. Here's a white one. And then right over here by, by our feet. Look at that, we got these cucumbers here, cucumbers here. It's hard to take a, too many steps without grabbing something else. We love to see it. Let's drop this off and then we'll keep moving along because believe me, there's even more stuff to get. I got so excited and caught up what I was doing, I forgot to get some of the ox heart tomatoes. Uh, sorry about that. Here's the Hungarian ox hearts. Look at these. Whew. Beautiful. Some of this coloration will go up to the top, but this will ripen a little off the vine too. But man, look at the size of this. Definitely ox heart, not a human heart. Imagine this thing. Imagine this thing there. <laughs> it's a monster. But it's supposed to be great for canning and also decent for fresh eating and not a lot of seeds and stuff. So a good tomato. Let's keep moving though. I got the bowl all emptied. Let's grab some more stuff. First thing I wanna grab are some of these honey crisp apples, but I'm not gonna spend too much time on it because I already have. A few fell to the ground, so we're just gonna grab those. Good size ones. And uh, these things are delicious. Let's keep moving though. I've got some more annuals and stuff right here. These peppers are doing excellent. This is the Jimmy Nardello pepper. The flavor on these peppers are just so good. Love the Jimmy Nardellos. Let's grab these three. <laughs> Perfect. They always get sweeter when you let them get more color like this. Some of these Criolla de Cocinas look ready. We'll grab a couple of these. Could get a little more color, but still I'm excited to eat them. Look at the shape of those. I mean, look how unique it is. So cool. I'm gonna grab one more pepper variety right over here. Looks like Tuck's into the peppers today. He's following the ball all along. Look at him. <laughs> He's gonna try out the Criolla de Cocina now. 
After this, I want to show you in a little bit where he buried the other pepper. It's still over there. Right above him here is we've got the apple sweet pepper. I'm going to grab another one of those. Almost like the lipstick pepper. But look at uh, the three different varieties, three red peppers. Look at the different shapes of it. That's one of the fun things about growing things on your own. And one of the things that I love about gardening so much is that you don't get what you put in. You get a lot more than what you put in. If you plant one pepper plant seed, you don't get one pepper seed back. You get countless pepper seeds back. So that's one of the reasons I love nature. It's just, it's so giving and it loves compounding. Everything is this idea of compounding and gaining interest and paying dividends. So let's check out some of these flowers right over here. This is the echinacea. This is one of my favorite flowers um, for permaculture and for a food forest. One reason I love it so much is because it brings in the uh, eastern goldfinches, my state birds. So they come flying around all the time. I've seen them this year, but I haven't got any on film. They love these seed. So this is all ready right here. Just pull that. Look at all those seeds. Sometimes I'll just walk around and just spread the seed and let it, let it uh, reseed itself like down here. This is all echinacea for the future. So we love to see that. This thing is just multiplying and expanding. Next to is the shiso. We let that seed sometimes, but not too much because that thing can be a bit invasive. I just love it for the color and the texture mainly of it. But now, <laughs> let's grab some fresh Niagara grapes. I, I can't even wait any longer because I'm telling you, once you get in about five feet vicinity of this thing, the, the smell just knocks you on your feet. So this like past week, it's just been the smells. I walked back in the corner and the Charente melon, those things smelled incredible. And then I come over here and these grapes smell amazing. So let's just get a couple. We're not going to harvest all of them. We're just going to harvest enough to make some jelly. And then I'm going to get some purple grapes too. But I mean, look, look at that. Whew, you love to see it. And then even if as I step back, you can see the light moving through some of these grapes. I think that's such a cool look and we'll grab some of the fresh sets here. Oh yeah. Uh, we love to see that. So beautiful. So like I said, nature is always willing to give back. And one thing that I love is having perennials as the foundation of my garden. Things like the grapes and the asparagus and the apples and the pears because those are like my harvest insurance and then any of the annuals are just like added bonuses. So it's nice when you get long-term investments that will continually pay dividends over the years because when it comes down to it, in the beginning, all you need to do is take care of the perennials and then in the future, they'll help take care of you. That's kind of the design. Let's grab some of these pears though. This is the Chajero pear butterscotch so good so sweet it's um someone asked if they're grainy they're definitely not as grainy in my opinion as the european pears and they're juicy it's like it's hard to describe almost more of like an apple flavor but really really good so we're going to put a couple of those in there and then i know i have some decent sized ripe ones up here that i want to grab like this one this has got good coloration we're going to get that so we have a few to snack on and then look at the size of this one Woo. look at the size of this this is this is what we want to see I could have maybe given it another day or so, but look at the size of it. Absolutely beautiful. I want to show you the persimmons real quick. <laughs> look at our buddy. <laughs> this is about hole number nine or ten. Right, Tuck? Look at this guy. He's digging a hole. It's so hot for him, so he's going to find himself a little hole underneath the persimmon tree. We love this guy out here. Hit the like button and throw some hearts in the comment if you love seeing this guy in the garden. His fresh haircut. Digging up next to these echinaceas that are just coming up on their own too. But look at the size of the persimmons. They're getting big now. The fruit's starting to really swell. And this won't be ready till like October, late into the season. I want to show you something that's pretty funny. I talk a lot about, about um, making sure you extend your season on both sides. So you want to extend your season late with persimmons. And you want to extend, have your season start early with asparagus. So it's kind of ironic that I have my earliest producing perennial right next to my latest producing perennial. So I think there's just, it's just kind of funny. I don't want to babble too much though. Before I move along, I have one other thing I want to mention and it's, it's my own, you know, big mistake. You guys helped me with it. So I want to thank you. The big issue was I said that I had a problem where, where the, uh, something was, the squirrels were stealing all of my hazelnuts. I said that that was the issue, but that wasn't the real problem. I was the problem because when it comes to permaculture, I've talked about it before, a lot of times the problem is the solution. We just have to flip how we're thinking about it. So I realized that I don't have a squirrel problem. I instead have a cat deficiency. It, you know, think about it for a second. I got that idea from Jeff Lawton where he said, 
you don't have a slug problem, you have a duck deficiency. So that's probably my issue. It's not that I have too many squirrels, that I don't have enough cats. Let's grab some more grapes though. We've got a bunch of sets, just incredible sets under here. Best I've ever seen. Look at this. Just look at this. Under here, over there too. Look over there. Oh my gosh. As we lift up back here, down there too, it's just an incredible amount of grapes. So let's get a set, one that looks relatively ripe. Oh my gosh, and a good one, relatively full set. Let's get this one here. And Tuck does not eat the grapes, we keep them away. The grapes aren't good for him. And then we'll get one more set. Oh my gosh, I just don't know, I don't know which one to pick. Let's get this one. This is gonna be a hard one to get though because it's kind of wrapped in the fence. We'll get half of it. <laughs> there we go. I mean, this isn't even like a tenth of the grapes. There's so many in there. So blessed to be able to have this much food and thankful, but we've got, sorry, I gotta tell you, we got a lot more tomatoes we gotta grab in this section in the old food forest. Let's swing over to there. Let's grab a few of these lemon boys right here. Look at the fruit sets on this. This is gonna be producing so well late into the season, but look at those three excellent tomatoes down there. Let me grab this set. This is one of the nicer sets I think of the day. Look at this. Oh my gosh. These are usually split resistant. You're almost getting a little splitting here, but that's because we just had a big rain that came that came through and that'll cause some splitting sometimes. I'm just gonna grab a few of these Super Sweet 100s, but I don't wanna spend too much time. This is the third plant of me grabbing fruit from. I grow this plant a lot because it does so well and it tastes so good, so. You wanna do some things that work, I mean, it makes sense. It forms that good foundation for an harvest insurance, like I talked about with the perennials. I mean, it just makes sense, in my opinion, to put some perennials in because they're gonna take a little time to produce, so while you're waiting, you can harvest a bunch of annuals, and then those perennials are just gonna be producing essentially forever for you, as long as you get the right ones. Here we've got some beautiful tomatoes, some Rosa de Burns. Move next to us here. This is the pink bumblebee. This is the one that we've been waiting for to really see the beauty and its characteristics. Let's see. Oh my gosh. With the way the light hits it and everything, it's just insane. Oh my gosh, I love to see it. So that's enough of those. And then we have the sweet treats right here. We'll grab some of those. Look at these. Ooh, a beautiful little tomato. And then some more of the honey drop. We already grabbed some of those. And come on this side, we've got the rosella. Productive spot right here. Some of these are splitting, but that's okay. The majority of them are doing real well. Uh, pretty good tasting tomato. And as we trail up, there's even more sets. <laughs> we love to see it. And then right here, we've got even more. I'll harvest more of these. I'm just not gonna do it all on camera. It'd take too long. Look at these things. Absolutely beautiful. We'll drop those in and just grab a couple more. Some down here and then a few from up top here. You'd love to see it. Let me see. Beautiful. It's got a little marking on it or something. I'm not sure what that is, but that's okay. And then we'll move over. We've got some really ripe ones down here. Some little cherry tomatoes. Nice color, nice shape on them. And one thing that I, I love, Bill Mollison's talked about it before, and he said that when it comes to gardening, the more you know, the more you realize that you don't know. So it's like, it's kind of counterintuitive, but I think it's more about a level of uh, like curiosity. It's like when you learn so much about gardening, you realize how many things there are that you don't know, and that could either you know demoralize you or get you super excited. And Bill looks at it as something that's exciting, and so do I, because it's like it gives you a level of respect and a, like a level of childish curiosity where you feel like you have to know more. So he said because he's the one that knows the most, he in turn knows the least, which makes him know the most. So it's kind of a funny, funny, funny way to put it, but I thought it was pretty entertaining. That's today's video, growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Look at this harvest. Uh, I'm just so thankful and I just feel so blessed to have all this food. And anyone could do this in their own backyard if they had the space. I'm not doing anything special. I mean, we've got pears, apples, grapes, tomatoes. Uh, I mean, zucchini, too many things to name. Cucumbers in the back, just excellent. All organic and all that I can just eat fresh right off the plants, right off the trees. It's a, it's a beautiful thing, in my opinion. And I just, uh, 
I want to share these videos because I want everyone to have the same exact opportunity that I have. And I get so much joy out of growing the food. I, I don't really like preserving it. People ask what I do with all the extra fruits and veggies. Most of the time I just give it to my friends and family because I don't enjoy the processing part. The growing is what I love to do. My hand is in every single thing here. I plant every seed and I plant every plant into the garden. So it's like the garden is, is a part of me. So I think there's something to that. Before I let you go, I wanted to thank Sherry Thralson for your new channel membership. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. It means a lot. And because of your support and everyone on the super thanks and everything, we get to you know grow all this food and hopefully provide a little bit of value for you, a little bit of encouragement, maybe a little inspiration, and just a picture of of the reality of it that you can do this and it's not that hard so i also want to say to hit the like button hit the subscribe subscribe button share with your friends don't forget to check out the merch down low and remember whenever you're on amazon start your shopping with our amazon affiliate link tuck wandering around here somewhere and james we'll be back to you again real soon we out